to Okanash Cooks, and today is a very special day because we are cooking with friends. I have my here with me today, and what are we going to make today? We are going to be making the great Upper Midwest tradition, the hot dish. Hot dish. So we some have dish. Some meat, some potatoes, onions. We're going to make it hot. Super hot, super good, yeah. simple. What else is on top? That's the best part. Tater tots. Mm, tater tots. Oh, God, I love tater nice tots. And crispy. Everybody loves tater tots. So yeah, these are all our ingredients we have here. We have a pound and a half of ground beef. And I did take it out of the fridge so that it gets the chill off it a little bit. You don't want it too cold. Always good. Yep, we've got a cup and a half of homemade chicken stock, a cup and a half of milk that looks like it's about to spill over. Perfect, we want lots of that. We want it to be nice and creamy. We've yes. got an onion, a few cloves of garlic, some fresh thyme, and a pound of white mushrooms. That is a lot of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yes. We also have in the freezer, uh, we have peas and what else is in there? Corn. Corn. Frozen corn and tots. Tater tots. Those All right, tops. so let's get started here. I need to stop clapping in front of my microphone. Right. Um, so the first thing we're going to be doing is preheating our oven to 450 degrees. So you weren't kidding me. <laughs> it's it's going to be hot. That's it's how you get those tater tots nice and crisp on the top. That makes a lot of sense. So 450 and we have a Dutch oven here and we are going to heat it over Let's see, medium high heat. So I will turn that on for you. Lovely. And uh, we are going to be putting the beef, mushrooms, onions, garlic, thyme, salt, and pepper into the Dutch oven and cooking it. Yes. So, all right. Yeah, That's I like to start cooking the onion in there first. Get those nice and cooked up before we even have the meat. I will be your sous chef and I will chop mushrooms. Very good. I like chopping mushrooms because it makes me feel like a really good cutter. <laughs> I know that's always the case, but it just makes me feel like I'm really good at it. Where's our waste bin? Um, okay. Or compost. Compost. We're going to compost all these extra bits. And a little pail, a little compost pail. <laughs> and we won't be getting the chickens any Mushrooms or onions, sadly, so they're going to be really sad because they don't get any hot dish. Um, no hot dish for the chickens. No hot dish for chickens. So what was, where did you find this recipe? I found this recipe on the Cook's Illustrated website. And I was looking for something to make for a big group of people. And then I just happened to see a picture with tater tots all over it. <laughs> that sounds perfect. Everybody likes tater tots. Exactly. So yeah. that's what we did. I remember coming into work the next day and literally everyone was like, I can't believe we weren't here yesterday because Michael made hot dish. And I was like, what is this hot dish thing? And everybody needed the recipe. I remember everybody was asking you for the recipe for it. Yeah. And you know, when I think of... Um, the upper Midwest, or usually Minnesota is what I'm thinking about. Of course, there's so many great like movies and TV shows. That come to oh, we set the dogs off. They got excited. Oh, about it. Ah, sh oh, <laughs> Why? What are your favorite movies? Well, obviously Fargo. Like, I still haven't so seen it. So good. I still haven't seen it. I oh my God, it's one of the best movies. And there's a show. They made a Fargo show, which I just saw actually like last week. Now, do they serve hot dogs in Fargo? Uh, I'm sure they do. <laughs> they I definitely have the hot And then there was a movie with Renee Zellweger and Terry Connick Jr. New in Town! New in Town! Yes, so good! So, whenever I make this, I'm really thinking about that because I just love that movie. Oh, that is. Oh God, I love a good rom com. You don't really make rom coms like you used to. Not really. That was one of the last ones. The last good rom coms. And then another great Minnesota based film is. Um, oh gosh, Drop Dead Gorgeous. Yes. Oh, know. such a good one. Those are all like the what early the? 2000s. Well, yeah, I think so. That actually might have been in the 90s, the late 90s. I don't know. I'm yeah, that was about. like 99, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 
We'll have to find some good clips of, from those films to add to this video. Yes. Gotta love I'm some. sure there's some hot dish quotes. <laughs> Somebody's gotta be making hot dish. <laughs> I know they're big on the casseroles in New in Town. That's like the thing, exactly. you know? So that's what we're doing here. And it can be any kind of casserole, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's gonna have a lot of meat. Probably potatoes. Mm, probably potatoes. Oh, I do love a casserole. All Maybe right. some pasta. Mm, pasta. A starch of, starch of some kind. I bet you can make rice casseroles too. I don't make enough casserole. Yeah. What I like about this is you're not using canned cream of mushroom soup because a lot of them have like canned soup mixes. Yeah. That was what really appealed to me when I made this. Yes. Is that you're essentially making the creamy, the creaminess like in there. Yeah, that this, that's why I like this recipe because we don't have to use the cans. It's yes. so much fresher, the fresh thyme. So good. Mm -hmm. And the mushrooms, because really the, you get all that moisture out of the moisture, the mushrooms, you get all that flavor in there. You also, yeah, like mushrooms have so much flavor. They're such a meaty. Anytime I do anything that's vegetarian or vegan, I always go for mushrooms because it just gives you that great flavor. All right, so I have the recipe that we printed out here and I keep staring at it. Uh, it says, do not thaw the frozen vegetables. They should be no. frozen when you put them in, yeah, which makes the sense. Yeah, thing before we stick it in the oven. So this doesn't have you cooking this with any um, oil or anything. So I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. I'm gonna turn my fan on. Now do you put skins into your compost? Yeah, oh yeah, oh, everything. Everything. We have a hot this isn't compost. for feeding chickens. No, yeah, we have like a separate chicken dish. Oh. Um, they usually get like the kids leftover porridge. And <laughs> um, so we put like coffee grounds, onions, mushrooms, and eggshells in that compost. And that goes out there. Um, and it all, it breaks down. Um, when we lose a chicken, I hate to say it. Yeah. That actually goes in the compost, believe it or not. Yeah. It actually kickstarts the compost, so wow. nothing is wasted. The dogs are very upset that the chickens are here now because they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> they would get all the good scraps, and now the chickens get them all. So they watch me make this dish, and they're like, "Come on, man!" Poor pups. Poor puppas. Poor beautiful pups. They look like they're well fed. Yes, that's the, that's and they the are. Kids are around, so they get all the kids. Yeah, oh yeah, the kids just feed them stuff yeah, that they don't want. Although one of the twins thinks it's funny. I I don't know what it is, but she doesn't want to finish something. She'll put it in the pantry. And like, I'll find like a banana in an onion bin. Oh, like I, I'm like, or I'll walk in there and be like, what does that smell? Yeah, <laughs> she just like didn't want to eat the last like inch of the banana. Oh my god! And gosh. she just like hides it in the pantry. Oh my god! Like if you want to hide in the pantry to eat things, that's great. But if you don't, just hide don't random hide the food in there. Rotting food in there. A taco. She'll put like half a taco <laughs> in there. Oh, I would be really mad at that. Yeah, that, I that, want that, that taco. I know. I would have eaten the taco. So I usually put a little oil and do the onions and the garlic yeah, first, that's exactly like just to get a little saute. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, I like that. Here, you can pick your poison. I've got many a. Uh, oh yeah, I love many a spoon. Any wooden to spoon choose from. Let's just pick this up and toss these. I like in. this one because it's like kind of a spatula and kind of a spoon. Perfect. It's yeah, I like that. Spoonula. Spoonula, that's a thing, right? Yeah. Do you thing. have a uh, garlic press? I do. I have or do you really like spicy. Do slice your garlic? Um, it depends. I don't usually slice my garlic. This is really big garlic. That is really big garlic. Maybe I should just slice it. I can do it if you don't want to do it. Or I have a garlic press. My garlic press, I got one that pushes the stuff out of the back. What about some thin slices? That makes sense to me. I feel like it's something like this where you're going to be, it's going to cook down anyway. Like yeah, I don't really, it's I don't. It's going to break down, isn't it? Yeah, I kind of, I kind of am rustic with my garlic. <laughs> my cutting skills in general. Yeah, me too. I'm glad to know. I'm, not really that great I'm more about like consistent size as opposed to shape. So I'll mm -hmm. cut like a carrot, like the bottom half of the carrot, I'll cut it in little circles and then I cut the top half yeah. in half and do it that way. Yeah, that makes sense. So I would have been kicked out of a, a professional kitchen. So it's a good thing I bailed on culinary school at the last minute. <laughs> they would have been like, you are not allowed to cut your stuff like that. And I would have been like, well, that's one of the, the great things about hot dish is, you know, the expectations are 
Are you gonna have good casserole? Mm -hmm. What's the flavor? You'd be like, nobody's really looking at these fine details. Yeah, it's not about it's presentation. All <laughs> dish. Mushed up together. Now, have you made any other hot dishes? No, I have not really made any other hot dishes. It's hard to branch out once you've made this one. Yeah, you know? this, this is kind of like the pinnacle of I feel like every hot, hot dish, dish I would make would have to have tater tots on top. So maybe I could change <laughs> from beef to chicken or yep. something like that, or even try ground turkey maybe, but it's hard to branch out. Oh, I love beef. Yeah. So I make one that I'm realizing is probably like a hot dish thing. And it has, it's like a cheesy potato casserole and it has mm, yeah. diced potatoes, um, cheese, sour cream, a cream of chicken soup, and half a stick of butter in the face. Mm. And then on top is a half a box of cornflakes and another stick of butter. Ooh. It is stupid good. Cornflakes. Yeah, that room. sounds delicious. Time to put the mushrooms in. So many mushies. Oh god, I love mushrooms. Me too. I this grind them up and put them in the white ones. Yeah, that was really surprising to me. Although it kind of makes sense. It's more delicate of a flavor. Yeah. I like to put mushrooms, I grind them up into my um what's it called? My meatloaf and my um, meatballs. And it gives them a lot of moisture. Yeah. And it's nice and nice and yummy. So, all right, what else do we need? I can cut the thyme if you would like. Yeah, we've got some fresh thyme here. Take that. And yeah, now I'm gonna throw the beef in with all the rest. Here you go. My beautiful dry aged beef. Bam. That's the nice thing about casserole too. You just literally chuck it all in. Yeah. Oh god, this time smells so good. We're in the hungry gap right now, so that just means that really nothing's growing and most of what you have in storage is just not that exciting anymore and it's yeah. kind of at the end of its life of storage. So to have fresh anything just smells so good. I've been making a lot of soups and stews and slow cooked things, but I'm ready. I'm ready for some fresh greens. So we've got the onions, the garlic, the mushrooms, and the beef all together. I'm just going to start to break up the beef all the in there. You really have to use a wooden spoon for that. Yeah, you really do. I tried using a spatula, <laughs> but usually I love using a spatula for everything. I know, I'm kind of, that's like my go-to, that thing right there. The wooden spoon. Yeah. My spoonula or whatever. And this one's nice because it's got a flat top. Yeah, it's like you can kind of scoop stuff with it, you can kind of break stuff up with it, but it's got at least a little bit of a curve. It's like a special little curve to it. Yeah. So, I've got, I've got all the spoons. We do a lot of spoon spoons in this house. And we're just going to cook this until all of the moisture, is, most of the moisture is gone. So that we can replace we, it with more moisture. Yeah, before we add the broth. All the other goodies. And all the beef is almost browned. We just had to keep stirring it to make sure it all cooks evenly. And yeah, and there's got, quite a bit of moisture in yeah, there. Yeah, now we've got all that fat and mushroom moisture. Oh my goodness, it says cook over medium high heat until nearly all liquid has evaporated, 25 to 28 minutes, stirring up occasionally, breaking up the meat. Yeah, I'm amazed. I don't know if it'll take that it's long. It's like making bolognese. Yeah, yeah. I made the Marcella Hazan's bolognese and it's literally like, add liquid before it evaporate. Wait an hour. Ooh. Add more liquid, wait for that to evaporate for an hour. It's so worth it though, isn't it? It is, it's, it's like a six hour dish. To get the concentrated flavors. I feel like that would be good inside. Oh, our oven's ready. It's hot. Hot oven for hot. the hot dish. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna measure out the peas and the corn and then the ready. Part of me is almost tempted to like do this in a bigger pan so that you have like all the tops you 
whole bag of tater tots. Yeah, I wonder how big a tater tot is. Yeah, it's probably like a medium size. Yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks like a little cheese dish. Yeah, it's like a little cheese dish. Now, would you put cheese on this? On the casserole, like under the tater tots? Mm. I feel like I did it when I made it. Maybe I don't that's know. like sacrilege. Maybe it's taking it a little too far, but I don't know. Can you take it too well, far? I think that, no, but I think <laughs> that there's enough milk, and then there's some, we're going to add some Parmesan cheese into the mixture. Oh, so that's the right. I kind of feel like cheese. For me, I that's forgot. Enough. Because it's got that creamy, cream of mushroom thing on it, yeah. more so than the cheesy thing. Let's see. After we do that, we're going to stir in the flour until fully incorporated, and we're going to cook it for a minute so it doesn't taste like raw flour. Makes sense. Uh, and then we're stirring in the milk and the broth, and we cook it for a few minutes, take it off the heat, and put in the cheese. So, perfect. Which we'll have to read again because I'll forget all of that because I have the memory of a goldfish. And do we have. Pre-grated cheese, or we grating some fresh cheese? What do we have? Um, it says grated. I have both, so oh, we perfect. feel, you know. We'll just use the grated stuff. We can use the grated it's stuff. It's easier. I like, I like easy stuff. Yeah, for something like this, I feel like I saved the block for like fresh pasta. Yeah, you want the grated to kind of thicken it up. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna measure these out, and I'm gonna put them back in the freezer because we don't want them fogged, because we don't want mushy vegetables, mm -hmm. and I just eyeballed. Okay. Matt made that. Oh, yeah. He made yeah, me another cool. one of these. I needed like a good stoop. You know, yeah, we have like yeah. a really thick stew. I needed a good like scoopy spoon. So maybe like two of them. Yes. I feel like a giant. No, that's my spoon. You need a spurtle for that. Do you have spurtle for your porridge? No. What is that? This is the traditional way to make your Scottish porridge. Oh, just for stirring. Yeah, you're supposed to stir it, and it has to be clockwise. If you stir counterclockwise, you can summon the devil. So oh, well, we don't, don't want to do, do that. that. And there's food. I feel like the moisture is almost coming to the end. Alrighty, so now we need our flour. Yes, maybe. I'll so we're at the brew stage. Yeah, I'll wait a little longer. Okay. Just one yeah. We do stir in the flour, and then we stir in the milk. Broth, we're going to simmer, scrape up any brown bits if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're not going to have too much. No, not going to have a lot of brown bits. Depends on how impatient you are. I'm super impatient. Yeah, maybe if we added some like tomato paste or something, you can get the brown bits. But you know what I was curious? I feel like it might be good in here. Worcestershire sauce. But I add Worcestershire sauce to everything. Well, let's do it. I love Worcestershire sauce. All right, let's we're going to we're going to go rogue. Yeah, especially right now. We've still got a little moisture in that perfect time. Right, we're going to go rogue. We're going to add a little bit of Oh my god, I love this to share. So there's a place in somewhere out in Western Mass. They'll come to me. Stockbridge, I think. They make their own Worcestershire sauce. It's like the best. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, but this is not. There's a sauce from like Yorkshire in England. AP sauce? No, not the brown sauce, but it's like York, I think it's called like Yorkshire sauce, but I'm pretty sure it's like a Worcestershire sauce. Oh. And it's real. I would have thought it would be like to serve over Yorkshire pudding, but that's usually like beef no, I don't think so. I need to get my hands mm, on something. I like it. I like our decision. We made a good decision. Mm. It's, not, it's not like too much. I love Worcestershire. Do you know what Worcestershire goes really well in? Guacamole. What? Yep. Really? It sounds wild if you do it right if you just put like a tiny dash in my brother-in-law taught me this yeah. it makes the best guacamole and people are always like why why is this so good and it's well, like it's got that umami mm -hmm. that everybody's always looking for i think that's really what it is it gives yeah. you that like oomph of umami because you've got so many fresh things going on in it it works perfect so, all right so most the of the moisture has been evaporated excellent so we can go ahead and throw in our flour the flour so I have three tablespoons of flour measured out in my little dish because everybody needs little dishes. I'll stir it up, let it cook for 30 seconds. So we're essentially making a root. You think about it that Pretty way. Much, yeah. We're just gonna With cook the, the raw flavor of the flour out, and then it'll help thicken the make like the gravy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can Coats hear it. It meat, sounds good. Coats these mushrooms and onions. Yummy. Ooh, oh, so right. And now we will add the broth. Yeah. All right. We'll see if you can add the milk without spilling any. I kind of set you up for oh, failure yeah. there. Yeah. All right. Give me your little milk. I guess. You can do it. You can do it. That is raw milk from Mel Valley. Real. Delicious. Oh yeah. Oh, so beautiful. Beautiful. And we'll just bring this to a boil real quick. All right. And then we're going to stir in the parmesan after we take it off the heat, right? Right. So how long does this go for? I think just until it's about three minutes, it says. So it's mm. until it's thickened. Right. So you're basically just like turning it into gravy consistency or right. thin soup. Wow. So you got to remember some of the moisture will cook off in the oven. So and we've got it on what? Medium, medium, medium high. Yeah, it's come to a ready. boil now. We can turn this off. So it's got a nice thick consistency. So we're gonna turn it off, and I will do this for you. Put it on over. Put it on so soon. And there's and your cheese. Now we are gonna add the Parmesan cheese. How much do we have? A cup. Cup and a half. Cup and a half. Grated Parmesan. This one's actually kind of, once you like make it a time or two, I feel like it's pretty easy to remember because it's like a cup and a half of everything. Yeah. It's pretty consistent. A cup and a half of broth, a cup and a half of milk, a cup and a half of cheese. Yeah, easy peasy. So much better than the can. So I got and frozen vegetables and we're putting them on top and I didn't realize we were doing that. Yes. And we're also going to need our tater tots. So the Parmesan is helping to thicken this up a little bit. Cheese tater tots. Ooh, that is delicious. All right, here's your white dogs. All right, so now we got to pour it into the bag. All right. Here goes to you. All right. Mixture into the casserole dish, nice and slowly. Get all the good bits. Yes. Your wrists are stronger than mine. Easy, easy. <laughs> all right. All right. And, and now then, we're going to sprinkle on some frozen corn and frozen peas. Just an even layer on top. And they are frozen, frozen. You frozen, frozen. Them all. And we have our tater tots. So we're gonna see how many of these we can actually get on the casserole. Because the more tater tots, oh, the, the, more better. the better. We're gonna garden it some time. It's such a good yeah. idea. Quiet! Dog, <laughs> nobody asked your opinion. So um, we're just gonna stack them, huh? Yeah, just like in rows. And I think that every time I do it, depending on which casserole dish I'm using, I decide which way I'm doing the rows. Oh. And sometimes you fill the corners in, in different, different ways. Oh. There's so. like an artistic element to this. There is, but look, this fit perfectly with the Oh, yay. Yeah. Gotta love the pioneer woman. I think she knows her way around a hot dish. This is probably she why probably it's the perfect does. size. Um, this makes sense, because if you dump them all on there and there's kind of a big mess, and they're not going to get even the crispy all the way around. Yeah, you want them to be really crispy, crispy and it's, it's a crust. It's the top of the pie. Mm hmm Practically. So classy. <laughs> pie. See, we did make a pie. Exactly. I thought for sure Michael was going to pick a pie to pick. He didn't choose a pie. No, not for this Or a tart time. or like a fancy, a fancy something. But I'm so excited well, about this. Well, yeah. <laughs> and strawberry season's Coming. around the corner. Coming. <laughs> Oh, that's when I want to make a pie. Ooh, strawberry rhubarb or something yeah, different? Yeah, totally. I want to make a strawberry rhubarb pie, but I want to put some herbs in it. Like basil, mint? Basil or mint or even thyme. Thyme. I really like to put thyme in my sweet things too, mm. which can be tough because it can be a little muddy tasting, but it's just so fresh. Grapefruit and thyme go really well together. So... Speaking of strawberries, once I saw somebody put black pepper with strawberries, Ooh. and I've always wanted to try it. I think they were making scones, 
Uh, Stun. Yeah, with black pepper and strawberries. Yeah, I have this thing where I feel like I need to put herbs in everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd be good in this herbs. You know, I'd be good in this herbs. Some herbs. That makes sense. I mean, watermelon and feta cheese go really well together, so. Although I'm kind of a purist with my watermelon, I just love me watermelon. Somebody would like a tater top. <laughs> but no. No tater top? Not sharing these tots. Plus, they won't be crispy yet. Yeah, you don't want to eat a mediocre tater tot, friend. You want to wait until they're as good as they can be. I think we're going to use the whole bag. That was the goal. That was the plan all along. Yes. I have more, too. I have half a no, bag I of tater tots. I guess we could just put the extras on the side and yeah. them up. These are the best. I do find that I always have to cook them longer than they say they do. Yeah. Trader Joe's directions are always really terrible. <laughs> always <laughs> too terrible. short. They're never that quick. But yeah. these are the best times. Quite appealing to have everything in a nice row. You could do like a starburst or you could get creative with it. It's like yeah, tile. I guess you could. You know, I actually just remembered I tip whenever I, I have the extras, I just put them on top. Oh. <laughs> That's I just you're not gonna waste top. the tater tot. No. So Woo! at the end, oh, We'll just keep that one there. I suppose you could just like toss them on there and then arrange them afterwards, but. And I'm happy that I'm at this end point and I'm having to kind of wedge them in because yeah. that means we've got like a nice, good sealed top. Good coverage. Yes. Wedge them in there. Yeah, I feel like when I made this, I threw cheddar cheese on top just to be really you sweet did. about it. <laughs> See, I'm happy with just the milk and the Parmesan cheese. Yeah the creaminess from the mushrooms. And we can garnish it with some, garnish it with some thyme in the end. Yeah. Which is always good to do if you can tell people what's inside the thing when they sure. break through the crust. Oh, okay. All right. be so fun. we've got like 10 left. Should we put them on top or yep. put them to the side? Yeah. Let's like, put them on top. Let's fill the corners. Because the corners are always going to get crispier anyway. Yeah. So that makes sense. And we'll just kind of disperse them. One for you, one for me. And you just eat them off and nobody knows the difference. Yep. Oh, God. One for Arlo. <laughs> one for the cats, the chickens. Yeah, one for Arlo. And I think he's one like. <laughs> one for Ailsa, one for Clara. Clara. And? One for Matt. One for Matt. Perfect. Oh, lovely. All right. So this is going in a 450 degree oven for how long? Um, it's gonna be like 45 minutes, I think. Okay. You open that one for me. There we go. Good luck, friend. There it goes. Maybe we'll some of this here. Yeah, it's gonna go in there for like 35 to 40 minutes, and we can give it a turn halfway through. Oh, well, that makes sense. Okay. All right. All right. Ready. How long has it been? 40, 40 minutes. minutes. 40 so minutes. excited! We got our Bukhari spritzers here. Uh, Everybody should have with their hot dish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. That does look very hot. Still bubbling. Ooh. Gorge. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Looks so good. I think yours came out better than mine. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe longer. Maybe we put the extra tots. Yes. Look at those cute little tots. I know. So you're supposed to wait 15 minutes before you serve this. All right. So it's been about 15 minutes. Yes. Now it's set a little bit. So let's give it a try. Here, you you go ahead and you dish. You dish the hot dish. Mm -hmm. This is it. Give me the hot dish. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, look at it. Oh my God. Look at that beautifulness. Um, nope. It's like the sexiest um, casserole I've ever seen. <laughs> it's a real hot casserole. <laughs> it's a real hot casserole. I know I was oh, almost going to call it out. real hot girl dish. <laughs> I but... like that. I think you should call it that. <laughs> real hot girl dish. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. 
Look at how hot it is. It smells incredible. Mm -hmm. okay. I can this smell the time. Okay. Well, there's no such thing. That's we had fine. We yes. This. No, I didn't eat any lunch on purpose because mm -hmm. because I knew. Here you go. You. Cheers. Cheers. All right. I'm gonna try to eat this and not burn so. my face off. I want a little bit of the. I don't think we quite waited 15 minutes. Yeah. Because you can't. No, who could wait? Who you I can smell, smell the Parmesan cheese in there. Mmm. I'm actually glad I cut that garlic like that. It's mm. got a big, like, roast to It's juice. beautiful. Oh my god. It's so good. Mm. It's like perfect balance of everything. So I think much we... better than the can. <laughs> I think we made a wise choice putting the Worcestershire in there. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I can't leave anything alone. You can't give me a recipe in this thing. Yeah, I wouldn't also have that. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like to just reheat it, the longer it's going to sit, the more the flavors are going to melt. It's going to be better when you reheat it. Yep. Actually, it's going to be even better. Yeah. Well, this was so much fun. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you. And there you have it. There is our hot dish with hot Michael. Girl dish. Hot girl dish. Cheers. Cheers. Please make sure to like and subscribe this video and we'll give you more of this because this was so much fun and I want to do it again. So, yeah. Cheers.